What is up, Midway Mayhem fans? This is Dan, and we have... Lauren! And we are here at Disney's Hollywood Studios today, and guess what we have going on? Toy, Toy Story. Story! Yeah, so the whole new land is going to be opening up. We have Slinky Dog Dash, we have the Alien Swirling Saucers, and uh, some other neat stuff. Is there anything you're really looking forward to? Well, as you guys know, uh, every month Disney has invited me out to the construction updates, so I've been following this since we've had dirt. We've had the construction, the buildings being built up, so I'm excited to see what the final product is. Yeah, there's a lot to check out, so we've got to go inside and see Woo! it right now. Let's go. Alrighty guys, so we have made our way inside the park and now we're inside the media center and there's a lot of things to check out. They even have a slinky dog coaster train here. There's merchandise, there's food. Let's go take a look. Now, one of my favorite things to do here at these media previews is check out merchandise, and Katie is one of my favorite people to interview, period. Katie, thank you so much for joining us, and you've got a lot of exciting stuff to talk about right behind us. We have such exciting stuff for Toy Story Land that you'll see behind us, from apparel for adults and children, we have new headwear items specific to land, and we have replica toys of the ride attraction vehicles that you've seen in the land itself. You're telling me the actual replicas and everything? Uh, I'm a collector of kind of neat <laughs> and unique stuff and that really has caught my eye. So can you tell me about some of the things that are behind us though? Definitely. So just as I said, the Slinky Dog Dash replica vehicle is actually a pullback toy. Okay. Kids of all ages will love it. We also have the little green men saucer toys themselves as well. You'll be able to fit in them in the land and then take them home and play with them. And of course, my favorite is we have the little green men wearable necklace that we have here, as well as our new headwear items that glow and move, and they're just super fun. So you have, of course, stuff for during the daytime, and then, of course, whenever the lights go down and everything. So they have stuff for the nighttime as well. Uh, I'm seeing shirts in here. I'm seeing light of stuff like what we were just talking about. I love the little green men and everything, the little aliens. Uh, of course, we have Buzz, but this, again, is what we were talking about with that coaster train replica. Um, yeah, I'm definitely probably going to have to take that one home. Uh, is there anything that you really can say has stood out to you? Like, is there something that you physically have touched that is kind of your pride and joy when it comes to the merchandise this time? I kind of mentioned it, but it's the Slinky Dog headband. Okay. I mean, headbands are iconic here at Walt Disney World Parks and Resorts, and to actually wear Slinky Dog on the head and have him move around, I mean, it's just, it's so fun, and and it really resonates back to this, the land itself. Absolutely, and I mean, it all ties in and everything, and Katie, you've got some really fantastic merchandise. I know a lot of the guests are going to enjoy this. Me, personally, I've already seen some stuff right here that I want to take home right now, so again, Thank you so much for speaking with us, Katie. It's really awesome to see this. Absolutely. Thanks for playing. Yeah. Alrighty, guys. So we're at our next station here, and we have Sergio and we have Jerry. And uh, as far as I can see, there's all sorts of interesting stuff in front of us. Jerry, can you tell me what we have in front of us right here? Yes, absolutely. Thank you for coming, first of all, to Woody's Lunchbox. Well, we do have a diverse menu. I'm excited because it definitely involves a little gas, a vegan options, vegetarian options as well. But let me start you with this. For example, this is a Monte Cristo sandwich. It's one of my favorites. Reason why is because it has turkey, ham, cheese, but also has a raspberry a layer of raspberry so when you try that one and you taste that one that's that's a little bit interesting so you're getting kind of the crispness one from the bread and then you're getting the sweetness from that uh, that kind of you know that's interesting that's kind of neat so it's a little bit of different edge and i see you have tater tots on here as well who doesn't love tater tots i mean it is also a side option we call it the potato barrels okay. and you can have it with another option of the in our menu for example, we do have the brisket barbecue a sandwich, which comes with pickle stew and cheese. It's another type of a sandwich, but imagine going to high school with your lunchbox yeah. and you have this option, you got energy for the entire day to play big. I would say, I, apologies mom, uh, but that looks really good. If I had the chance to take that for uh, school every day, I'd be definitely taking that. In fact, brisket is one of my favorite things. That looks really amazing. So I'm excited to hopefully try some of that later on. Me too. I hope you stop by the lunchbox and Woody's lunchbox and try it out. Absolutely. And I mean, we got a lot of other options on here. I see salads uh, with, of course, those potato barrels. I mean, there's pastries. I mean, what are some other things that I see on here? Um, 
For example, this one to towards our vegan guests, we do have a, the one that we call Touches. It has a potato barrels, corn chips, it has cheese, sour cream, and also chili. But the chili and, and the cheese are vegan. Okay. So we do have that mix for our guests too. Uh, we do have tomato, tomato soup, we have pasta salad as well, and um, that and expands more. We do have the turkey sandwich, which is a cold dish, and um, it comes with um, you know, our lettuce, and a variety of options with tomato too. Yeah. And I even see it looks like a grilled cheese as well. So I mean, you have options for not just the young, old, I mean, everybody is going to be covered here, even vegan options. So I mean, that you're really thinking of everybody when it comes to Woody's Lunchbox. Uh, I don't want to get too much into it. I mean, there's literally just mounds and mounds of food here. There's something else that we got to go over here for, if you don't mind, Jerry. We got to go speak with Sergio because you've got something interesting going on over here. Sir, could you tell me a little bit about what we're seeing right here in front of us? Yeah, we have um, chocolate and hazelnut uh, tart. That's an oven tart. Uh, and we got a uh, glaze like with maple, a little touch of maple. And the raspberry marmalade inside of this one with uh, raspberry um, glazed. See, I'm, no offense, I'm sorry, Jerry. All that looks good, but I'm a sweets kind of person. Seeing this, yeah, I give that. I mean, it, 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 it's again on this mom. You know, making sure that we that we got a wonderful food over there. I mean, these these are made made in house. Uh, right. They were never, yeah, they never touched by machinery or anything like that. There, we we putting a lot of effort to make sure that they're. Well, and something ready. else that I I can kind of see right here. Even on the little pastries, they have the fork marks where they're literally pressing it together. So you can tell this is literally handmade, guys. I mean, they're making this every day in the morning, fresh before it goes out to the park for all the guests. And uh, you have a little demonstration that I can yeah. see over here. So what do we have? We have in here the hazelnut. I mean, the <laughs> sorry, the raspberry glaze. We got uh, dehydrated raspberries. Uh, we got chocolate raspberry. Uh, we got Maldon salt, and it's, we just give it a little touch with salt, that way it's just, because it's caramel. Uh, caramel crunches, caramelized bacon. We we cook the bacon, and then we just chop it and put a little bit of the brown sugar and make sure that it's crispy. And then we have ma maple uh, glaze for that. Sergio, you're speaking to my heart and my stomach. I don't know what else to say. <laughs> I mean, but I can see he's about to scoop it out, and he's doing a little demonstration on here. So we just want to bring you back, like when you were young and your mom used to just, you know. Make little pastries. Make you, yeah, you know, many times she give you something and you just say like, uh, Mom, what is that? Just eat it. Yeah. And he was just have it. Just have it. I promise you it's good. You're not going to die. And he was like, oh, my God, this is so good, Mom. So then she started putting on the lunch box and you go like, wow, my mom did this again. And then you just then you just grow up remembering all those things. So that's exactly what we have in here right now. We want we want to give it a modern twist to to um, when we were young and people took care of us and make sure that we were well fed. That's exactly what what we're trying to do in here. Well, Chef, it looks like you've done a beautiful job. I mean, if I could, I'd be taking this entire table with me. I'm sorry, guys. But overall, this looks really amazing. Again, these are all food options you can find at Woody's Lunchbox, and uh, they're serving it up hot and fresh starting now since Toy Story is now officially open. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Alrighty, guys, so we have a special guest here, Liz, and apparently you do some very special things for Pixar and executive producing for theme parks. Can you tell me a little bit about that, actually? Absolutely. It is a kooky job, but, you know, it's a ton of fun. We, um, we have a small group at Pixar that does parks and resorts work. Everything Pixar in the parks. That's what we do. And so it could be anything as small as a parade. Well, that's not small, but or as big as a land. And here we are at Toy Story Land. And and of course, we had a chance to see Toy Story Land with all the Pixar involvement. Of course, that's an iconic film. Uh, it's really kind of shaped Disney and who the company is by having Toy Story. And now you've brought that into the parks. Me personally, I've had a chance to grow up with the films. So I, I had it where I was very young and I see the connects and I see the, you know, Tinker Toys and stuff like that. You literally shrunk me down and put me into that land. Can you tell me about some of the important details that kind of went into that in your involvement with Pixar? Well, the, this land in Florida here, uh, it we had 11 acres to work with, so it was a lot of land. And so it was a challenge, you know, to try to make this land feel rich and make it feel like Andy's backyard. And so 
the fact that you, Daniel, were able to feel like you shrunk down. I mean, I felt like that too the other day because it was the first time I'd seen it finished. It was two days ago because I've been here for the construction and everything. But it was, it was really great. And I think it's it, as they say, it takes a village and collaborating deeply with Imagineering and their amazing team, and then filmmakers at Pixar. We all kind of get together and think about what would be the coolest, funnest thing to do for this plot of land, for this park. What's going to work the best? Because every park has a different little piece of land that you got to work with, and you got to work within the constraints and all kinds of things, and the weather and all that. Here in Florida, everything grows. Yeah. So one of my favorite parts is seeing that big, tall, grass-like bamboo when you walk in, and you're like, oh, my God, and seeing that big, tall um, statue of Woody and the crazy coaster that Andy has built for Slinky and that Slinky going around with the little tail wagging. And, and it all kind of comes together, and you're not sure why you feel little, but you do. Yeah. And I'm sorry, I'm not trying to cut you off on that one, but it's something that I fully agree with, Like, and I, I know it sounds dumb, but the little thing that you point out with just the tail on Slinky Dog Coaster, I had a, our media rep pointed out, and she was like, you're going to love this. And as soon as I saw it go around the course of the very first time, and I'm seeing literally his, ta his tail wag, I started cracking up. I'm not going to lie, but it's the little small things like that to even the park benches. We're talking they're dominoes, like literally domino park benches. And even the ca trash cans are literally themed in here. There's nothing in this land that is not themed. And forgive me, we're going really into the details of this because Pixar, again, you've, you're bringing the film into the park. You're seeing literally, as you're walking through the queue for Slinky Dog, without giving too much away, they literally have a box, okay? And it's got coaster park tracks, essentially. Well, apparently that piece that was in the box is physically out on the track. Like, you literally guys have gone into that much detail. Right. I mean, this is actually, what we, we like to do is extend the stories of the films. So it's, you're not going to find a scene from the film out in the land. Yeah. You're going to find an extension of the story with our characters and with, you know, Andy's backyard. You've never seen it in one of our films, right? So what would Andy do in his backyard? What would it look like? You know, Andy may not be the same age as he is in Toy Story 1 or 2. He might be a little bit older. His handwriting might be a little more sophisticated inside of one of the boxes. He might be a little tidier with the scissors this time around. You know, it's like, what would he be like now? And maybe he's built something more sophisticated, like that, like that coaster. He's not just doing building blocks anymore. Wow. He's doing a whole coaster system, Andy. You know, so it's, it is fun to think like that. It's like, put yourself inside of Andy's head or put yourself inside of a kid's head to just try to see what would a kid do. <laughs> right. Well, no, I can see the fact that you saw that is really, really cool and noticed it. I mean, we, we, we live for that kind of feedback, you know? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, really, if you guys have the chance to come here and see this land, I mean, it's the small little details. Even the characters that are walking around, and I'm sure you guys have character involvement where you have to literally say, Buzz, he's got to look like this and he's got to be in this area, that kind of thing. Um, can you tell me your hardest part of this job? I think the hardest part is is ending um, this this team has been amazing and and we have this we developed this friendship and relationship over four and a half years of working together as a team and honestly this one really makes me s not sad but I I'm gonna really miss this team and in you know because we have our team here at Pixar and then the Imagineers have their team and and we've just had one big team working on this land together and we've had so much fun it's, it's meant a lot to me personally I've had a great time okay. and I, I'm glad to hear that actually and one of my favorite things is getting a chance to speak with some of the people behind all this stuff our viewers they see the finished product they come to the parks they spend the money and they enjoy the parks don't get me wrong but I like being able to see some of the the finer details of what goes into it that's why we have all these construction from the first stake in the ground until where it is now so being able to do that is really kind of neat and getting a chance to speak with you Liz I really do appreciate this so it's given us a, a little bit more insight as to how Pixar gets involved with the theme parks I mean we know you guys are constantly involved and there's a lot more projects probably in the future where they're going to be working with you but uh, we're excited for all the work that Pixar has done and what they will be doing in the future. Liz, thank you so much for speaking with us. I, I do appreciate it. It's been a pleasure. Thank you so much, Daniel. All right, guys, so we're over here in front of Sleeky Dog Dash's coaster train. Uh, this looks really neat. Lauren, can you tell me anything that really sticks out to you about this? Guys, this is exactly, exactly like the movie Slinky Dog. 
every single detail is exactly like the movie. Dan, what do you think? Uh, I mean, it looks really nice. High gloss train. Let's actually go take a look real quick. So as we walk over here, you can tell right away the seats are very accommodating. So, I mean, if you're a larger guest, smaller guest, doesn't matter. I think you're going to be able to actually fit in this just fine. Is there anything that you really can notice about it? Have you guys seen the little slinky tail over here? It's literally got a spring on it. It's literally got a spring on the back of the train. That is, is so cute. <laughs> I mean, is there anything that you can say negative about? No, because no. this thing literally looks exactly like Slinky Dog himself. So, yeah, of course, we're going to go check out the ride in just a little bit. Uh, Lauren, you excited? Um, yes. All right, guys, let's go. Alrighty guys, so the moment of truth has arrived. We have finally entered into Toy Story Land, Woo! as you can tell by this big guy right behind us, Sheriff Woody. So everything looks pretty good overall in my first impressions. What do you think, Lauren? Oh my gosh, it's definitely like the movie has come to life. Look at all these details. You have the green army man. You got the, the big Andy's footprint over here. Yeah, I mean, there's all sorts of different stuff. I mean, <laughs> it really does look amazing. And you've had the opportunity to see this from literally the first stake in the ground all the way to where we are now. It's yes. really kind of neat and there's a lot to go see. So let's go. Yeah. Hey, howdy, hey. Andy set up his coaster truck and Slinky Dog is ready to help you ride like the wind. merchandise cart. Check it out. So we have some t-shirts featuring Slinky, Jesse, we have Toy Story Land over here, and Slinky over here, he lights up. So that's a little light-up toy over there. We have backpacks, more t-shirts around the corner over here. Let's see what we have. We have one of those uh, parachute argument kind of things. So we have Woody, we have Buzz. That's really kind of neat. And around the corner over here, let's see more t-shirts and we have mugs as well the hat right there showing toy story land we have some of the woody mickey ears buzz lightyear bubble blower the cloud i like it so a uh, t-shirt there featuring the aliens and then this is one of the neatest things i've seen in a very long time it's a toy and it's featuring slinky dog dash so you can actually launch one of the coaster trains right there Another t-shirt says, I played there opening summer 2018. And then the final area over here, more cups, t-shirts, and they have this right here. Alien swirling saucer cars that you can take home.
Well, now that we've walked inside the area, there's a couple things that we need to talk about, and one of them is right behind us, Toy Story Midway Mania. Well, they've changed the entrance location. It's no longer over inside the park. Well, this is still inside the park, but it's now inside Toy Story Land. Is there anything right off the bat that you can kind of say that you like or uh, notice different? Well, definitely I noticed different is that it's more open. The other one was kind of in a building more. This is a definitely more open. Um, definitely notice the decor more. The other one you didn't really see inside too much. Um, do you notice anything different um, that you can see? Well, I mean, I do like the fact that, like what Lauren said, it's very out in the open. The other one, it was very kind of claustrophobic. It kind of got you in that little alleyway, and it yeah. felt like there was no way to escape. Yeah. Now there's a giant pathway, and people can just kind of walk up and go as they please. But uh, I'm noticing right off the bat, this is a very nice improvement here with having this entrance over here. Folks, I'll give you a hint. This is the part where you clap. Thank you, thank you. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Right this way to Toy Story Midway Mania. It's a ride that's a game. <laughs> is this thing on? Now, where was I? Buzz and all my pals have set up the Midway Mania playset just for you. So while Andy's away, it's time to play. Uh-oh. Oh no. It's, it's another, about to go down. It's another challenge. We'll always know what happens on this. Yeah, you usually beat me. <laughs> but yeah, what is up guys? We are here on Toy Story Midway Mania. And uh, they've just recently reopened the other side, the new yes. side. So we just went through the new entrance. Yes, we, we did. We had a chance to see Mr. Potato Head. And the whole queue looks very nice. But now it's time for oh. war. Yeah, that's right. This is one of our favorite rides and attractions here at Disney's Hollywood Studios. And uh, hopefully we're going to do pretty well today. I don't know. My arm is uh, already a little we're bit tired. We've been out in the heat, so we'll, we'll try our best. Yeah, we'll try our okay. best, but I'm not giving you any promises or guarantees no. that we're going to be able to do no. very well. But here we go. Oh Fingers crossed. Gosh. All right. Okay. <laughs> I can already feel my arm is hurting. And here we go. Ah! Too bad. <laughs> he says that now. Yeah, I say that now, but give it four or five more rooms yeah. and we'll see how my arm's feeling. Here we go, barnyard. If you want to do further, aim higher. Yeah. Alright, so after the first room, oh, see, so Lauren is already okay. beating me. She's got 17,800. My 15,600. Right. I have a better accuracy, but okay. she's beating me right now. Now 
at 69,300 and Lauren is at 34,000. Uh, you got a little bit of catching up to me. elements, mission briefings, some buttons, and I don't know if these buttons work or not, that would be kind of neat if they do. And again, water fountains, themed ones, this is neat, little power uh, surges like batteries, defeat zerg, defy, detection, destroy defenses, 
Everything looks really nice though. Alrighty guys, so the next ride that we're about to do is the Alien Swirling Saucers. Oh yeah, so we're about to do this right now. Hopefully, we're the chosen one. about done so yeah that was the alien swirling saucers that was pretty neat actually that's a really good addition to this area so cool stuff You have a giant little cattail on top of there. Uh, I know, it's a dead cat. Oh. I know. I'm a sorry. fantastic cat. Fluffy uh, had a bad day. Hello there, civilian. There. So we have some uh, different landings Howdy, partner, that we're giving out. Hello guys, how you doing? Hello, hello. Thank you. I appreciate it. Woo! Alright, I'll buy it. It's not every day you meet another drummer. lights hanging up and I'm sure this is going to look really fantastic at night. And 
now we are on our way to Slinky Dog Dash, and this is leading towards the entrance. It is time to get that credit, and right now we're about to do Slinky Dog Dash. Lauren, this is a new roller coaster for us. Are you excited? Are we getting a dog credit? Is that what we're getting? Uh, I know we're at least getting a coaster credit of some sorts, but this is a mock launch coaster. It has several different launches. The trains are kind of smaller, so they can do more of the dynamic turns and whatnot, but uh, I'm excited, and uh, it's time to ride. Let's go. Well, I am super excited. It is time to ride Slinky Dog Dash. Let's head inside right now and take a look at the queue. So far, everything looks pretty nice. Some shade, that's a building right in front of us. This is uh, lighting that's been built into the area. They do have fans, so uh, just in case it gets a little bit hot, like it already is. And check this. So we have a support right here, just like the ones that you find on the roller coaster, but it's for the fountains. And speaking of the roller coaster, check this out. That is so awesome. I literally think this is a real piece of track. It was manufactured just for theming and everything, but it's metal, you know that, but it looks really cool. There's another piece right over there as well. And if you notice, even the main entrance sign has a piece of track. So there's track literally everywhere. It's really kind of neat. Now that we're inside here, we'll take a look. I'm seeing Slink up on the very top there. This is full string. And right here it says Dash and Dodge Mega Coaster Kit. 425 pieces. And there's some other interesting stats on here. So it shows, like the footings, 80 support bases. And then it talks about the 15 straight pieces of track, 15 lateral curve track segments, and more. And I believe those are true stats. Just around the corner over here. Some TVs showing the instruction manual as to how you need to put on your safety gear. Here we go, Slink. Elmer's glue. Don't eat it. Not advised. I promise you on that one. Pencils over here for drawings. Looks like uh, Andy's been working on this coaster for quite a while. And here is the little information spiel. Two riders per row. They do have lap bars on this. Say so all seats will be filled. And dispatch. Yeah, items in a small pouch, including cameras. Apparently, they don't want anybody taking cameras on this. We have this squeaky pink one right there. And then on the back of this, you can see more Slinky Dog track. A little illustration from Andy as well, it looks like, with the wrench. We turn the corner over here, and we're just about there inside the station now. With all your parts and pieces, turn around the hands, arms, and feet, legs, springs, and all inside the vehicle. And keep an eye on your little talk. If you came for thrills, you're barking up the right tree. Here we go. Oh, man, here we go. So what is up, guys? My name is Dan, and this is... Lauren. And we're about to do Slinky ah. Dog Dash here at Disney's Hollywood Studios. Woo. Here comes the launch. Yay. Woo. Picks up some good speed right there. Yeah. Make a little turn. It's now diving down. Woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> there was a little air time there. And just as you say woohoo, he's going woohoo! I know. <laughs> Woo! Woo! Nice little pops of air here. Yeah, a little turn. Woo! Good G's there. Woo! <laughs> Uh -oh. It looks like we're coming up to the second launch, yes. taking a little bit of a break now. Uh -oh. And it seems like we're slowing down. Yes. 
Now we're going yeah, backwards. backwards. That's a little different. Uh, why is there flames on either side? I don't know. Should and now here? why are they spinning? Yeah, that doesn't Seems matter. like we're powering up and oh here we go. My God. Woo! Ah! Woo! <laughs> to the quad oh. down. Oh. Little bunny hills. Oh. <laughs> Whee! Woo. Little pops and dive back down. Oh. And awesome. up into the brakes. That was pretty yeah. cool actually. That was actually pretty nice. So not gonna lie, uh, that was pretty good. I yes. mean in terms of like family roller coasters and whatnot, that's a really long ride, has really good G-forces, good speed, yes. it has launches. Yeah. Definitely. I can't find anything to fault about it. I mean, what do you think about it? It's definitely one of Disney's better coasters. It's definitely something unique that I haven't seen before from the park. Yeah, I really like it. And at the very end, we have a, a singing penguin. Yeah. See, you've got a friend in me, of course. You've got a friend in us. Yeah, you have a friend in us. But uh, again, this is Dan and Lauren Woo! signing out from Midway Mayhem here at Slinky Dog Dash at Hollywood Studios. Remember, it's officially open now. Toy Story Land. So get out to the park. Here we can see the exit station with some of the parts and pieces for Dash and Dodge Power Booster. So you have the launch right there. And then they have the CGI rendering of the ride right here. And if you notice, well, it's got the launches on there. So yeah, Power Boosters, we're at it. And I appreciate it. After years and years and years of waiting, and all the months of seeing this thing finally get built, well, guess what? We finally had a chance to do our first ride. And in my personal opinion, that's a neat little roller coaster. I mean, when it comes to family fun thrills, I mean, this one is not exactly tame per se. It's got some decent airtime. It has some good G-forces. What do you think about it, Lauren? Um, that was definitely a pretty intense coaster. Um, my favorite part was the up and down portion. That was probably my favorite portion of the ride. I would say that's your favorite portion, but the entire ride is essentially like that. There's tons of hills on this, yeah. and the launches are really cool. Yeah. Can you actually tell me about the launches and what you thought about them? That, like I said, it's very intense. They had a few in there. There was one portion where they, you know, pulled you back for a minute, and these little spinners on the side would go like, you know, kind of like a wind up for you to just wait. And then it was like launch. It was and crazy. that launch actually felt pretty yeah. intense. So that that second launch that they have, without giving anything away, it's really a fantastic attraction. Yeah. On a scale of one to ten, again, you've got to consider we've ridden hundreds of roller coasters yeah. around the world. And this is going to be up there when it comes to the family throw rides. I mean, I, I don't have a ranking system as like one, two, three, that kind of thing. But this is probably the best family coaster I've ever been on. It's one of the longer ones, too. I mean, yeah. it's got a really long layout. Again, good G-forces, good speed. I can't find anything to fault about it. And the queue is really pretty as well. There's a lot of neat little tidbits along the way. Final thoughts on it? I definitely think one of my favorite coasters here at Disney for families. I'm, I'm going to say it. Yeah, I was going to say, if you like Seven Dwarfs Mine Train, yeah. you're going to like this one, yeah. I promise you. So uh, that's our review of Slinky Dog Roller Coaster here, or Slinky Dog Dash. Scale of 1 to 10, I'm going to give that one a 9 to a 9.5 at least. I mean, like I said, the families are going to love it, Grandma's going to love it, the kids are going to enjoy it. I know Lauren and myself did. Alrighty guys, so we have a special guest here, Nathaniel, and uh, apparently you're a rep for all this beautiful stuff behind us. Nathaniel, can you tell me about what we have? right behind us. Daniel, what you're seeing here is one of the most exciting things that we've done at Walt Disney World, the brand new Toy Story Land opening on June 30th, which is very exciting because who doesn't love Toy Story? I remember growing up with Toy Story 1, loving even more Toy Story 2, and then crying in Toy Story 3. Yeah, so I absolutely love that now we have a full land that we can reminisce in with that time. And the best part is that now you get to be a part of the story, you're not just watching on TV, where you get to be shrunk to the size of a toy and get to play with Woody and his friends. So we have two new attractions, a new food and beverage location, and lots of fun, over the size fun for a guess to enjoy. You know, you you bring up the point and I've said it during another interview, literally the one right before this about how when I first walked into this area, I truly felt like somebody had zapped me and I'm now mm -hmm. a shrunk little character in this Toy Story right. land. 
Is there something that really sticks out or stands out in your mind in this land? Well, I love the attention to detail. I mean, we really want to make sure that with everything we do, our guests get fully immersive into the story, right? And how we're going to do that is by making sure everything is larger than life. So even if you just take a round of all the details that we have, whether it's from the cubes, from the benches, right? The water machines. Everything yeah. is from like a toy that we remember that we used to play when we were little. It doesn't matter when we were kids that we can kind of pinpoint and have a connection with it. So I love that because it doesn't matter how old you are, you're going to have a connection with this land just by walking around yeah absolutely and it's not just that you also have the parents that again mm -hmm. they've grown up I mean I'm not too <laughs> old or anything else like that but if I were to have kids or something like that I would expect my kids to grow up with the same movies mm -hmm. and then being able to bring them here it's kind of neat because they're yeah. literally watching it on TV and a couple hours later they could literally be in this land and mm -hmm. see Woody and speaking of Woody I, I think I, I think we have Woody as well Daniel. Yeah, yeah. Sure, hi Woody joining us today I'm, I'm very happy to see Woody here but Woody you got a heck of a land here of course Andy's been a little busy with your mm -hmm. roller coaster and whatnot yeah. and Slinky has been a little busy as well well you know the best part is that Andy is nowhere to be seen so of course and uh, Woody and the, the toys can have a lot of fun yeah and then all of you have not joined us so Woody is one of course one of the additions that we have for Toy Story Land Buzz like you will also be walking around you know recording new space rangers jesse the Little cowgirl will be around and um the uh the green army men as well you know who are going to be patrolling the area looking for new recruits and you might just be that yeah, absolutely. i mean sheriff woody is the one that passed the final test <laughs> like, you, you know as a sheriff but sarge does a very pretty good boot camp to make sure that you're ready for that yeah of course <laughs> A lot of exciting stuff here. Nathaniel, thank you so much for speaking with us. Of uh, I think it's about time for us to go get a ride on the Slinky Dog Dash. Ooh, that's Woody's uh, favorite Woody, now. <laughs> you ready? Yeah, you ready? I think we should go. Let's go.
Are we ready? Thank you. Good to know. I didn't say that. You're in timeout, son. Let's march. It looks like we have plenty of batteries, but we still need more power. Well, I think I know where we can get some real star power. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Tim Allen. Woody. Hey. Hi, everybody. <laughs> wow. Thanks, Bob. Thanks a lot for having me here. This is just amazing, man. This is a, a, hi, everybody. Let's get that. You, come on, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta be careful what I say. <laughs> Good to see you guys. This is amazing. You know, I, I've been part of this movie, this great movie, for 20 years. And literally, after being there, you can't ever imagine that somehow you'd be able to play in Andy's backyard. This is amazing. And when you walk in this place, it's like, it literally is like at home. We all know this place. Well, actually, you guys, yeah, you better. And of course, Zerg. You know what that? <laughs> I want to thank the entire team at Walt Disney World for making this possible. It's like walking into our own home, and we can play here. We can have a good time. Now, we all ready to get this play big, sir? With this much energy and excitement, we are good to go. Oh yeah! Great. Let's get to it. All right, all together now, it's our great honor to officially open Toy Story Land. Well guys, that is going to do it for another video here from Disney's Hollywood Studios, and it was a special one because Toy Story Land officially opened, and I do want to say thank you to Disney for inviting us out, as we had a chance to really see it grow over the last couple months, and Lauren was able to go to all those media events. Lauren, what are your final thoughts on the entire area? I just got to say that Disney put an amazing amount of details, not only into the land, but also into the rides itself, such as the Slinky Dog Dash, and also into the Alien Swirling Saucers, which, by the way, is one of my favorite rides in the land. Yeah, I got to say, everything is really immaculate when it comes to the details. I mean, all the way down to Andy's shoe print. I mean, really kind of neat stuff. We're going to have more videos from here, so if you like what we do, follow us on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter at Midway Mayhem, and we will see you out on, on the, the Midway. Midway.